most of us have created presentations to, have, to deliver content to parents, staff, or students. Generally, those presentations go from slide one to slide two and so on. Yep, and we all wanna know how to increase student engagement, right? Mm -hmm. So today, we are gonna show you how to design nonlinear presentations in Google Slides. Nonlinear presentations allow you to navigate through material without having to follow a sequential order. Some examples of these presentations include Jeopardy games, quizzes, comic books, and self-exploration on a topic. Before you begin writing content in your presentation, it is important to map out the flow for how you want your content to be delivered. For this example, I am creating a self-paced practice quiz that students can take independently. Depending on the delivery method, you might need a table of contents, introduction page, or instructions. I will choose to include an instruction page so students know how to navigate this quiz. Next, I will insert placeholders for the questions. You can do this by pressing the drop down next to the plus button and choosing whatever template that you'd like to for your questions. I will need pages after the questions dedicated to telling students if their answer was right or wrong. You can insert pictures directly in, from the web into your slide deck. I've already inserted my slide to tell students that their answer was correct. So let's insert a picture telling them that their answer is incorrect. You do this by pressing the insert button and then going down to image and then search the web. These pictures are already filtered for images you can reuse and modify. I'm going to type in, try again, select the one that I want and press insert. This will notify the students that their answer is incorrect and that they'll need to try again to get the right answer. Next, we will need to insert navigation buttons to bring students to the next question if they are right and back to the question again if they were wrong. And this button is going to bring students back to the question to try again. I have also included a hint button if they get the answer wrong the first time. You can continue this process for however many questions that you would like. You can create hyperlinks from shapes and text that will take you to different parts of your slide deck. Now keep in mind that it's important to keep a consistent flow and theme to keep your audience focused on the content that you're delivering to them. Now that we have mapped out the flow, next we will insert hyperlinks to appropriately connect each slide. The first thing we need to do is create a home button. This will bring students back to the instructions page. We do that by pressing the insert button and we're gonna grab a shape that we're gonna designate as our home button. I'm gonna use a call out I'm going to put it in the bottom right hand corner so that students know that that's always the spot that they can go to to press the home button. I can make it any color that I would like. I'm going to double click to actually be able to type in the shape. And I can make it bold and underline it if I choose to do that. Now let's go ahead and connect this to the instructions page. Make sure you have clicked on your image and we're going to press the insert link button. Go ahead and press the slides in this presentation and now we're gonna search for slide number two to connect it back to the instructions page. And so now anytime that I have a questions page, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I put a home button to bring students back to the instructions page. Next, I'm gonna go through the same process, but to create my answer choice buttons. So again, I'm gonna insert a shape. This time I'm gonna choose a rectangle. And for now, I'm just going to write answer choices inside. Later on, you can go back in and add your content and make it look really nice. For this example, let's go ahead and make answer B the correct answer. So we actually need to make sure that this hyperlinks to slide number four, which is the correct answer button. So again, the same process, we're gonna highlight the actual shape. I'm gonna press the insert link button. And now let's find slide number four, which is where the correct answer choice is. And now it's linked to slide number four, which is the correct answer. You'll go through that same process for the rest of the three answer choices to link it to the try again slide. 
And I also love to add images, animations, and videos mm -hmm. that connect to the content and my audience's interests in order to keep the presentation fun and engaging. A great tool to use in conjunction with Google Slides is Web Paint. You can add it to your browser as a web extension in the Chrome store. Press the Add to Chrome button next to the Web Paint. At this point, you will see a paint palette on your browser toolbar. That's how you know that it is added to your browser. Once you have it on your browser, go ahead and open up a new tab and look for a website that you'd want to interact with in conjunction with your Google Slides. Since my quiz is on Matter, I found a website that talks about a Matter and some content that I would want to include in my Google Slides. Once you're on your browser, go ahead and press that Paint button again, and now your toolbar is going to come up. These are all the tools that you can utilize on live web pages. You have shapes that you can use, you have your pointer button, you actually can add text or free draw with the pencil, and you can add lines as well. You can change the color. And in a second here, I'm going to show you how to take a screenshot. So let's go ahead and add some text to this picture because I'm eventually going to want to insert this picture into my Google Slides. I can use my line feature and my pencil to point to this picture. I can also actually underline parts of the sentence. What happened to the matter that you started with? Okay. Once I have everything that I want, I'm going to go ahead and actually take a screenshot of the content that I just interacted with. So I'm going to press this screenshot picture. It's going to bring me to a new tab uh, so I can crop the parts that I want. Okay, that's the part that I want. I'm going to press crop. I'm going to press the finish button and then download. Now that it has downloaded, I can press save. So my image saves, and now let's go back to my slides because I'm going to insert this as one of my questions. So now I just press insert image, and I'm going to actually oops, upload it from my computer. And there we go. So now I have my question in the form of a picture with some annotations and I can insert the buttons for multiple choice answers if I want to next. I also want to show you that you can actually present utilizing Web Paint as well. So by doing that you want to press the drop down underneath and press presenters view. Once you do that, go ahead and just press that uh, palette again, that paint palette so that you can have your toolbar come up. And now I can actually write on the slides without um, the screen actually changing. And again, I can type. And then by pressing the erase button, it's, just, it's going to erase just the annotations from that page, not the actual screenshot. Nonlinear Google Slides presentations can be created for any content or grade level. Students can also collaborate within Google Drive to create them as well. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Make sure you check us out for another episode of PDL Techniques.